This video is sponsored by Serverless 360. More about them at the end. What if I told you that the problem isn't that you're overworked, but that you're working too hard on the wrong things. And there's one thing that you're doing every day that makes you work two or three times harder than you should be. You are an amazing person with lots of skills, so you should be climbing the ladder of success in your life, but instead you feel buried under a mountain of things to do. And if you're like most of us, you think that you have to come up with all of the answers yourself, and nobody can live up to that. But what if I told you there was a way to reduce all of that stress so that you could have more time to focus on what you want? And not only can you apply this principle to your work life, you can apply it to every area of your life. The planet has almost 8 billion people living on it today, and this one principle is the key that the most successful people on Earth have used to break free and achieve more. Now, Bill Gates knows a thing or two about getting stuff done. He not only co-founded Microsoft, but helped to lead the computer revolution that we all enjoy today, with computers in every home and in almost every pocket. And I recently read an article on Inc.com where Bill said this, Ever since I was a teenager, I've tackled every big new problem the same way. Who has dealt with this problem well, and what can we learn from them? So the key to success isn't coming from the right family or having tons of money or even having the best degrees or certifications. The key can be summed up in three words, existing successful solutions. In other words, follow the KISS rule, keep it simple. But the real magic isn't knowing what solutions there are, but implementing those solutions. And if you wanna change the world, you innovate and build your own special sauce on top of those solutions, making them even better. So let's put what you just learned into practice. As an admin, you need to manage your environments. And those environments can be made up of servers and databases, networks, security, identity, apps, and probably more. And this is a huge amount of work and you're probably using multiple solutions to try to take care of it all, which means there's even more stuff that you have to know. So let's ask Bill's first question. Who has dealt with this problem and done a great job of it? Well, Microsoft has. Azure has millions and millions of resources that hundreds of thousands of customers around the world, like you, have used to manage, configure, and secure all of them at a global scale. Okay, so now we know the who, let's ask the second question. What can we learn from Azure? So am I telling you to learn how Azure was designed and built so that you can build your own version of it? Nope, that would be a crazy amount of work. But as the saying goes, if the mountain will not come to Muhammad, Muhammad must go to the mountain. And Azure Arc lets you bring your resources from on-prem or any other cloud into Azure so that you can configure, secure, govern, and automate them just like your native Azure resources. Let me show you how. I've got a Hyper-V host with some VMs on it running in my home lab. I don't have any connectivity into Azure at all, but yet these VMs get to show up in the Azure portal. And this gives you access to an amazing new feature that is probably one of the most powerful things out there. But first, let me share with you how this works. Azure Arc is powered through something called the Connected Machine Agent. This agent gets deployed onto your resources and projects them into the Azure portal, and this will minimize your complex management, repetitive tasks, multiple tool sets that do the same thing, risks, and threats. And deploying the agent is super easy too. Here in the Azure portal, just search for Azure Arc. And along the left blade here, you've got a management section, then infrastructure, where we'll find all of our servers, data services, and application services. So there's a lot here, so comment below on what you want me to cover in the next video. For now, let's click on servers, and then click add at the top. Click to add a single server this time. Now the requirements to make this work are port 443 outbound to some specific URLs, as well as local admin rights on our server that we want to add. Click next. Then we need to select our subscription and an existing resource group for your ARC servers, just like any other Azure resource. Now the region over here does not have to be where your servers are physically located. This is the Azure region where you want your metadata about these resources stored. And the East US is just fine for me. For the operating system, I'm using Windows, but you can see you can do Linux as well. And for the connectivity method, 
This time I'll be using a public endpoint, which means I'll be sending encrypted traffic over the public internet to Azure. But you see, we've got some other options we can explore in a future video. Click next. And here you can add some tags. Now these are metadata about your resources, not only so you can keep track of things, but so we can add some automation later. Now the physical location tags here are directly related to your ARC resources so you can track and manage where they physically are in the world. And the custom tags at the bottom are your typical Azure tags. So I'll add the ones that I use for application, cost center, environment, owner, and support contact. Then when you're ready, click next. Now click the register button so your ARC servers will be allowed into your subscription and this might take a few minutes to complete. So in the meantime, scroll down and here we have the PowerShell code we're gonna use to add our Windows servers into ARC. Now you can reuse this script as many times as you like as long as the details are the same. For example, if they're a different operating system or they need to go into a different subscription or different resource group, you'll need to regenerate this script. Click the download button here when you're ready and save it over to your server. Then run PowerShell on that server as administrator and go ahead and execute the script. The agent will be downloaded and then installed and you'll be prompted to sign into Azure. Copy the code and then open the device login link, paste the code, click next, and then provide your Azure credentials. Click the sign in button and you should see this prompt verifying that you're signing in with an Azure Arc connected machine agent. Click the continue button and then you can close the window. And in another minute or so, you'll see a new link in the PowerShell here and you could follow that directly to your new Azure Arc resource. And as you can see, it looks very much like a virtual machine. Now at the bottom here, we have a whole section for the capabilities and each one of these could really be its own future video. So before we do any more exploring, including a bonus feature that you will not wanna miss, let me tell you about our sponsor. The cloud can be a complex place, but Serverless 360 is trusted by many of the world's leading organizations to remove application blind spots and resolve your problems rapidly. You can instantly visualize, monitor, and fix any issues in your cloud apps, and then achieve end-to-end -end tracking of your business process flows, and Serverless 360 will save you time by auto-generating your documentation, turning your Azure subscription data into actionable insights for you usage, security, and cost. Try Serverless 360 free for 15 days, or you can book a demo using the links in the resource section under the video. So the newest feature hot off the press is Windows Admin Center integrating with the Azure portal. So now you can use the Windows Admin Center along with your Azure Arc resources. And the beauty of this is Admin Center doesn't need a dedicated server anywhere to run and you can manage your systems no matter where they are without a VPN, certificates, or DNS records. Just click the setup button. The only thing you need to do is just select the port that you wanna run on, and I'll just take the native port, and then click the install button at the bottom. And this is gonna take about five minutes to deploy the Windows Admin Center agent and set up an endpoint for you to connect to. So while that's going on, over on the left at the top, let's go to the access control and click add and we want to add a new role assignment and at the bottom of this list you'll see the windows admin center administrator login role select that and click next and then select to add a member now this permission is required for anybody who's going to connect over windows admin center so even if you're the owner of the arc resource or a contributor you're still going to need this permission once that's been added, click back over on Windows Admin Center and you should be ready to go. Just click the connect button. Now you need to sign into the server. So you're gonna need admin credentials for that. And that could be either local or domain related credentials. Then click the sign in button. And if you've never seen Admin Center before, it is a pretty awesome tool. Here in the Admin Center, all of your administrative server functions are right here, including remote desktop, installing your Windows updates and patches, PowerShell, editing the registry, monitoring, and of course, this is only the beginning of what an Azure Arc enabled world could look like for you. Now in our next video, we can talk more about some of the features and services that you can enable through Arc, like Azure Policy or Update Management. So remember, keep IT simple and happy learning.